So hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of AMC's Corner. How are you all doing out there? Well, I got something really cool to show you guys today, and that is this Nissan 240SX Silvia Drift Machine. Now this is probably one of the most custom cars I've yet had on my channel. And yeah, uh, it's not just a set of rims and uh, some, some ground effects on it, no, no, no. Now we got some Silvia badging. But I believe this is a replica Sylvia. I believe this was a 240SX that somebody got. I might be wrong, but my uh, my reasoning behind that is this is a right hand, uh, we have a left hand drive S14. And I want to say all the real Sylvias were right hand drive. Also, come on camera, get over there. That is a very American VIN plate. I believe that it wouldn't have had that DOT VIN plate on it if it was a real Sylvia it would have like the MR2 in the last video would have had some Japanese kanji all over it but still a really nicely done piece of equipment here this is uh, this is not for looks there is a lot of really cool instrumentation and a lot of really neat hardware all over this thing now, uh, interesting, the uh, speedometer it is in kilometers, but I wonder if that's just like the rest of the, all this stuff, just some stuff that somebody did onto it. I know uh, I know the stock car wouldn't have had that, uh, that aluminum fake uh, carbon fiber weave aluminum looking stuff in the cluster. But a lot of hardware, a lot of go fast and monitoring hardware on this car. get a look under the hood now I really have only taken a brief look at this I was waiting to do this uh, with you guys on camera I have yet to have this thing up on the lift so I have taken a quick peek under here because we've had problems starting it it uh hold on a second I gotta get this hood prop up yeah about the only thing I've noticed is we've had some problems starting it and I think that's because it has this tiny little way smaller than it should be battery because it has a remote oil filter system on it which kind of gets in the way of the big battery so first thing this car really needs is for a rear mount battery a battery put and relocated into the trunk which I think I'm going to rec strongly recommend but uh yeah a lot of go fast bits under here SR for start off the motor, it's uh, the SR20 DET engine. This isn't an engine that we would have seen in this car. It's definitely a swap and a lot of really cool, really cool stuff under here. And I see a uh, ceramic coated manifold, external wastegate with external wastegate plumbing. I also see, I don't know if you guys can see it, we'll probably get a look when we get it inside. The uh, There's an air conditioning line melting on the um, on the wastegate plumbing, uh, we, external wastegates have their own little exhaust that runs back and you can see the AC line melted right into that, so that's uh, that's not cool at all. But otherwise, everything else in this car, you guys know how I am about real AN fittings. It has all sorts of real AN fittings all over this thing. Oil catch can back there for the PCV system. Yeah, really cool, real cool setup torque shock for the uh, torque shock for the engine torque to get the damp in that so it's not all thumping around on the mounts yeah really cool uh, pro taper wheels answer pro taper wheels I didn't know they made wheels I've actually got a set of their handlebars on my gold wing so anyways let's get this thing up on the lift let's see what's going on with it let's see what's right with it let's see what's wrong with it All right, we got her up on the lift. Uh, let's start up the front and look our way back. First thing, we see a real nice big front mount uh, intercooler for the turbo. Oxbeam LED lights. I don't know how many times Oxbeam has emailed me asking me to review their review their products, their lights on my channel. But uh, you know, as you know me, I don't like to sell you crap that I don't really use, and I'm not a big fan of add-on LED lights. But they are what they are. So first thing I notice is. Uh, some wrenches holding the front mount intercooler in place. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I don't like using cast stuff and when you should be using mild steel, but if it holds it on there and it works and it looks like it's taken a few curb impacts, it I guess it's all right. 
Mishimoto intercooler it looks like it's branded which is would be the big M on the front yeah big oil cooler now this is why they did the remote oil filter because you can plumb a nice big oil cooler in line with that and that's what they've done here big Gretty or G ready or Gretty I've never really understood how to say that someone down in the comments wants to remind me I've uh, I've used their stuff before but uh, lost in translation giant oil pan which is what you're gonna want with a uh, with sustained high rpm high load which a drift car spinning rear tires around corners will do you're gonna want a lot of extra oil and that would be what that's all about I'm very very surprised that this car has air conditioning that they kept the air conditioning in it and that's that big air compressor air conditioning compressor right there although we know it doesn't work because of the melting yeah you get a good look at it right there see that uh see that AC line and it's melted right into the wastegate exhaust this is the separate exhaust that uh that spider is not going to be real happy when we go on our road test he is not going to like being right there at all or she I should say sorry sweetheart you picked a bad home um the eviction day is coming the eviction day is here uh I would say that's a Garrett T25 turbo but definitely looks like it's got some custom stuff going on big old downpipe with the first thing, the first problem I see being a streetcar, I don't see any room for a catalytic converter anywhere in there. Um, another thing I notice about, you know, bad for a streetcar, which you're not allowed to have, is the steering has heim joint ends on it. I don't know why you would rather heim joint ends than real tie rod ends, but that's going to have to be changed. Can't get a sticker. I don't know any state that allows heim joints. Well, maybe Florida, but that is what it is. Big stance coilovers, big all adjustable stuff in there, big brakes on it. I'm sure these brakes weren't stock for this car. They probably came off of some uh, oh, two, uh, oh, 300Z or something, or 340Z. I just don't know at the moment. So coming back, we got that five-speed transmission, which I'm kind of surprised they didn't pull a six-speed out of a different car. But I guess if it fits and works, you're not using all six gears on the... A drift track anyway you're using kind of probably third gear all the time I'd imagine yeah not a lot of bracing under here I kind of expected to see a lot more bracing around the tunnel the tranny tunnel area but not a lot of bracing going on uh, big three inch exhaust with a resonator and going back to a big fart can muffler which is probably a Jasma muffler, probably a quality unit. Um, everything I'm seeing on this car is some quality stuff. Uh, it's definitely was built to do to do track. This rear adjustable coilovers, uh, tires pretty uh, pretty worn down. I would say this thing has spent some time, you know, lighting these tires up going around corners. Uh, one thing I noticed just pulling this thing in, the clutch on this thing is more like an on-off switch. Uh, there's like no no smooth engagement of the clutch it's like on and off and it kind of you'll see just pulling it in the uh the floor here can be a little slick and you see just pulling it in i was just nosing it in and it was just spinning the tires a little bit engaging that clutch i bet you it's a fun drive though uh totally adjustable uh, added in adjustment arms really big upper adjustment arms all adjustable which you're going to want in a car like this I'd say this rear subframe looks like it's probably been replaced or maybe they just took it out and cleaned it up and added some uh, looks like some anodized metal up in the bushings probably some special hotter bushings and all that decent sized diff for a small car I wonder if it's got anything built in it but uh, kind of would have to yeah it's probably probably got a spool in there I'd imagine so yeah I mean a little bit of bracing back here to hold this subframe Sorry, the subframe to the uh, to the unibody. I guess that's probably maybe that's all you need in this car. So yeah, looks like a looks like a car built for a specific purpose, and that specific purpose is to go fast sideways. Now I don't know if we're gonna get this thing sideways out on the road. I just don't know enough about it. And um, yeah, when we get this thing down and get going with the funnest part of the review, the road test. It has an advanced independent suspension, but it's not a Porsche. It boasts luxurious amenities, but it's not a Mercedes. It's cloaked in a sleek body, but it's not a Lexus. 
It is the all-new Nissan 240SX, the affordable luxury coupe. I gotta say, guys, I'm looking forward to this road test now. We're not gonna go crazy or anything. Those uh, those tires look kind of worn out. They look like they take a little while to get uh, to get up to temperature, to get to a point where they grip correctly. So we're gonna take it a little easy. It's not gonna be like that Camaro video where we were, you know, mulleting it around and everything. Now, first thing I'm kind of surprised with this car having all this hardware, and I'm sure it's pretty capable. Just regular three-point belts. I would think with all this equipment and performance and go fast and and apparent driftability, this thing would have some at least a four-point, if not a five-point harness in it. So, kind of interesting. Uh, I didn't mention the uh, if you guys can see it, big nice uh, anodized roll bar back here, fire extinguisher. I know it's off camera. So, anyways, one that's a little munched up. I like that format being all weird, but it is what it is. So, now, first thing I want to mention about this car is the clutch. This definitely has a, a racing high performance clutch in it. Like I was saying a little while ago, it's like a, it's just like a switch. There's no, there's no real slip or modulation to it. It's just I'm spinning the tires right now. Not even trying. So I've already warmed this thing up a bit during the uh, the walk around, so you don't really want to get on a car like this until the oil's up to temperature. Turbo doesn't appreciate it. Real thick oil gets pumped to the top of the motor and uh, can't get back to the oil pan fast enough and you end up uh, you end up with air in the oil, causes damage to the bearing. So we got her all warmed up. First thing I notice, really hard ride. Those uh those stance coilovers are really, really, really stiff. All right. Well, it goes sideways a little too easy. Wow. <laughs> so, no grip. Like I was saying, those tires take a while to get hot, I bet. Gets up and goes good within reason. I mean, I'm not breaking the speed limit, I'm not catching up to the cars in front of me. That's not my place to get in trouble in a, in a car like this. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, holy shit! Wow! So, when she comes on boost, I gotta say, the clutch is not the only thing in this car like a light switch the boost man there is just it's 10 pounds 10 pounds hold on hold on <laughs> wow a little laggy until it comes on boost once this thing comes on boost careful where you are pointing all right it makes all the noises so here's the hairpin now we're gonna take it easy here cold roads cold tires well when you want it to grip it grips pretty well if you're easy on the throttle and keep it out of boost you'll uh She'll go right around the corner for you. So anyway, yeah, the uh, like I was saying, I don't think this is a true Sylvia uh, being left-hand drive and with the the the, uh, the very United States VIN tag on it. Kind of tells me that this is a this is a clone, but a very nicely done clone, if I must say. Now a lot of these cars are getting eaten up by the drift circuit. This is one of the, uh, you know, anybody that's into drifting or watches any of that or into it knows that the uh, the 240SX is just uh, it's just everyone's pick, and uh, they they they've just not around as much. You know, 20 years ago, 15 years ago, you used to see these cars all over the place. Nothing special. You know, people using them as their daily driver, grocery getters, but 
you too. There's a, there's a story about these cars and where they're coming from that I, I'll share with you sometime, but I want to get permission from the person that's supplying them before I, I say where they're coming from. Alright, we got the, uh, the performance corner right here from Stop. Much easier to drive than that uh, right hand drive MR2 in the last video. guys can't play too hard well, all right guys I had a lot of fun on that road test I gotta get in there and fix some boring cars on that note and until next time leave some comments if you guys have any details about stuff I missed about this car I like learning from you guys just as much as you like learning from me and on that note and until next time guys <laughs>